All right, this next deck is a build around submission, which means rather than someone sending me a specific deck list, they said, hey, Jeff, can you give this idea a try and work with it? So the idea that was submitted here was they wanted to see me take a crack at building with Phyrexian Obliterator here in Historic, one of the HA3 cards here. So I've tried to put something together that's a little bit aggressive with things like Gutter Bones and Knight at the Ebon Leech at the bottom end of our curve. We've got some Disruption, an Agonizer Morse, Fen Lurker, and Murderous Rider. And then we curve right on up into, into Grey Merchant at the top end of our curve is a really sweet payoff here. We've got uh, some cards with lots of black symbols in them, so Gary should be draining people out a lot. Another thing that's kind of sweet that you could do with this deck is you could actually have pseudo combo kills on turn 5. So if you have Ayara and Nightmare Shepherd in play, you can play Grey Merchant on 5 drain them and then use Ayara to sack Grey Merchant and bring back a second Grey Merchant with Nightmare Shepherd and drain them again. So these these three together can often drain your opponent for incredible amounts on a stalled board or as early as the fifth turn of the game if you curve out three, four, five. Finished my first sub survey. I feel like a real Glandian citizen now. Thanks for the quarter of a year, uh, Mallow. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And for people that haven't filled out the survey, if you're worried, if you've taken WotC surveys before, my survey is nothing like a Wizard of the Coast survey. People, people who are in chat will let you know I value your time. It should take you less than five minutes to complete my survey, even with the extra questions regarding the open series. The, open, the survey is literally like, I think it's five or six multiple choice questions and then two free answer responses. Enter your Twitch name and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight multiple choice questions. Enter your Twitch name and then two free response sections. What should I do if I didn't study for the survey? Just fake it till you make it. Confirmed hardest question was remembering my Twitch name. I would, I do ask that you get your Twitch name accurate on there. Because I do cross-reference that with my current subscribers to filter out any people that might have gotten the link to the survey that aren't current subs. Because again, the intention of that survey is to get feedback from the people who pay me. Whew, that hand is good. <laughs> yes, I guess I take staggering insight. I guess. Maybe I'm supposed to take fight as one, but if I take fight as one, they staggering insight their Adanto Vanguard. So we'll go ahead and plan to just block this 10th district with our knight and activate it here if they attack, I think. Yep. So they're going to get to save it here, but at least they don't have to spend a card for them to use their fight as one. No, not case sensitive, Misha. I, unlike, unlike people at Wizards of the Coast, I understand how to parse data accurately to remove user error. And making, making my data case sensitive would not make sense in this instance. 
Wait, the only time you should ever parse data considering the case is you should if you're managing passwords. If you aren't, if you aren't managing people's passwords, there's no reason to have your data be case sensitive, really. Should always, should always clear, clear white space, eliminate potential for human error, etc. I think we're probably dead here. Yeah, I agree. Our our hand's super expensive here. This is definitely going to be a, game, a match where we want to uh, take our curve and drag it down. So we get to bring in Heartless Act and Legion's End tier. Probably don't mind having a couple of Graph Diggers cages. I think Nightmare Shepherd's a card we're not very interested in. Again, want to drag my curve down a touch. Um, Fen Lurker's probably not... Actually, would I would rather have Fen Lurker or Gutter Bones? Actually, probably rather have Fen Lurker pressure their hand a little bit. Can potentially snipe the uh, protection spells out. Let's give this a try, I think. Sure, that makes sense. You shouldn't even parse passwords. You should have a hash function. Your hash function should be case sensitive anyways. I've actually never, never really worked with any end user applications that involve handling users' passwords. Parsed, parsed and automated a lot of data, but never, never involved passwords. Nah, I'm not playing this deck to sideboard on for instant obliterator. I also think obliterator is very good against like what my opponent's deck is doing. I mean that's that's true for like literally everything though, Lucos, right? Don't don't reinvent the wheel, utilize what's already out there. And basically like the TLDR for doing programming with absolutely anything. That's why you should. That's why you should use well developed uh, languages like Python, because there's just infinite libraries out there for them to start. It's a fantastic draw, so we get to Heartless Act here. We don't have to worry about saving removal for Luris because we have Graft Digger's Cage. They always have a 3-2 lifelink, something like that. <laughs> Won't somebody please think of the card advantage? And this stops them from casting spells in general from their discard pile, so they can't even recast like their enchantments and stuff. It's not even just the creatures it stops. Yeah, Curious Obsession's pretty good. The Evasive Threat here is also very good for my opponent. It means Phyrexian Obliterator won't be able to gum up the board on the ground. Game is over because they can't take Obliterator off the table without doing damage. If they have Justice Strike, that's not true. I mean, they're also playing white. They could have, they could have like, uh... Devout Decree? They can have, they can have, I'm actually going to time you out, because that's like wrong for a lot of reasons. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of reasons that's not correct. They also, they also have random things like this that give lifelink, like, this game, this game's actually like really far from being over. In fact, I think we're behind. Opponent, opponent's archetype is very sweet. The... This, this opponent's deck and Jund Luris are both decks I really want to get up on the website when time permits. Might mayhaps do some of that tomorrow. The Mr. Chainsaw. Thanks for the three quarters of year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Alright, if we don't die here, drawing a land would let us Grey Merchant for 10. We've got, uh, you know, seven, eight, eight black symbols in play. And all of, no, not all of our lands are untapped. I've got two cycle lands in my deck, actually. We could also just die here. Could also, could also just be dead. Casual draw three on the other side of the board. No big deal. Oh yeah, the Ayara drains them for an extra one too. Good call. Oh, man. 
I guess we start by attacking and then we eat this post combat to try and draw land. Need a second shot here. What are your thoughts on Naya Winota's play pattern? I don't think they're particularly bad. He seems to hate Winota with a passion and called me dumb for saying Luca is worse. I, I think I think Crokey's is way off base. I think um I think the play I pause rewind um just to fully to fully articulate myself i think there's two different discussions you need to have when comparing just kai luka and naya winota i think when you talk about the specific play patterns that naya winota and just kai luka have i actually think they're probably both equally obnoxious i think both decks are incredibly powerful and feel bad to lose to. Now, the nuance in this discussion when comparing the decks, though, I think isn't just in what the decks are doing, but how you can stop them from doing what they're doing and what those decks do once you stop them. So I would argue that even though both of those archetypes feel really bad to play against and are obnoxious when they work, the axes and number of cards that you can play to stop them from working is much easier to do against Naya Winota. The subset of Magic the Gathering cards that meaningfully disrupt Naya Winota is much bigger than the subset of Magic the Gathering cards that meaningfully stop Just Kai Luka from winning the game. And I think that detail is what makes the Winota deck far less offensive than Luka if all, like, win rates and everything were, were considered the same. I also, I also think that it's important to note that the cards you're playing to interact with and be good against Winota are good against the Winota deck even when they don't draw Winota. So just having creature removal is good against the Winota deck's fair draws. Whereas, if you're playing things like Removal or Graph Digger's Cage against the Luka deck, those cards basically don't have text when they're not luka in you, and they just destroy you as a value control deck. The Mike Arnold, thanks for the 17 months. That's also true. The Luka deck also plays Tefri, and Tefri is a rancid pit stain. Right, Tefri. Tefri alone, in my opinion, as a design and the counterplay it stops, is way more obnoxious than anything else. This hand's a little slow on the draw. It might be right to mulligan for a, for a removal spell. So as, as always, I think this discussion, like most things in life, ends up being shades of gray, and there really isn't a this is strictly better or strictly worse type comparison like a lot of people want to be reductionist and try and break it down to. It's it's more difficult to dissect that nuance, and like, like you saw there, I took 90 seconds during the sideboarding screen to really get all my thoughts out onto the table, but I think if you're trying to make a good faith effort to talk about the differences there, you need to get into those details. So next turn, I get to Fen Lurker the stroke out of their hand here potentially, and then hopefully I can punch with Obliterator after that. What archetype is the opponent playing? The opponent is playing Jeskai Tempo or Jeskai Luris, however you want to call it. It's a deck that we've played on stream a two or three times in Historic. It's very powerful and a lot of fun, in my opinion. It's going to be going to be one that gets added to the website next time I have a chance to do updates. I actually have a banner for it sitting in my mailbox.
Yeah, yeah, I think it actually has a very good Winota matchup because it uh, gets to play four Reckless Rage. It's not consistent enough in Standard, in my opinion. Huh. Am I attacking with an Obliterator? Probably, I think I need to end the game. I think... I think the people who call Naya Winota too high variance or a slot machine are as ignorant as the people that say Hearthstone has more variance than magic because the word random is on the cards. Cards like Winota and cards like Collected Company, when you build your deck in a way to reduce and mitigate their variance, they're actually incredibly low variance cards. And I'm saying his point his point is nonsense and it's a it's a low effort low effort take. All right, so I think I actually draw with this here cuz if we hit gray merchant we win. Heartless act, eh? Guess I just cast that now. I mean, the goal of Croaky's channel isn't really like, generally speaking, nuanced response, right? Like, he's he's like a spike deck player slash spam memes in my channel, Keck W's or whatever the kids do. Yes, I agree with that. I think that's accurate. You'll, you're going to lose a lot more games with Winota to flood slash screw than you are because you miss on Winota triggers. And that's not to say you're never going to... That's not to say you're never going to miss, but, you know, on average, the actual magic variance. Wanted both Winota and Luka banned. I think that's idiotic. I think anybody asking for Winota to already be banned in Historic is just looking to give lazy hot takes. And that that's it. They're looking to give lazy hot takes. I think there is a chance... That it might be too good. But I also think that anybody saying with certainty us on the outside have enough information to make that make that statement. We just, we don't. Like, the amount of data for Naya Winota in this historic format compared to just Kailuka and Standard is night, is night and day. It's night, night and day. It's not close. Maybe I'm supposed to go to five here. Keeping a handful of four drops doesn't seem particularly good. Might be right to drag the curve of my deck down. Maybe I want to cut some of these Nightmare Shepherds for some more two drops. Yeah, I agree, JVL. And that not only is the volume of data points different with what we have so far with Naya Winota, but the time we've had for the format to establish itself is different. Which I think is a really, a really important distinction. Like, Jeskai Luka is posting absurd win rates three weeks after we know it's the best deck. If Naya Winota has another 200 plus player tournament three weeks from now where it still has a 70% win rate, then yeah, that's probably indicative that there's a problem. I think I do this in case I draw a Grey Merchant next turn. My dojo does not contain fear. 
Anchor probably did here, I assume. They just have another Grey Merchant, because they always do. When do they have it always? When do you have it? Never. For those of you that are new to magic. Shuffler confirmed broken by fault. It is. It is your fault. At least you know it's your fault, though. And knowing, knowing is half the battle. Okay, so... Is my out to win here drawing Grey Merchant? Can I, can I win this game without drawing Grey Merchant? I think the answer is no, right? So I should sack my Obliterator to try and draw Grey Merchant because it will come back. And then if I draw a Grey Merchant, we'll have a 7, 9, 11 twice. This gives me a redraw, right? Because it's a one mana spell. Although, if I redraw with that now, I don't get, um, I can't kill them with the Grey Merchant, right? Which is unfortunate. So what do I what do I play here now? I can't beat Grey Merchant out of them, really. Getting close, fixed. Could block, obliterate, and sack in response. Their card is trample. Oh, I can blank one of their draws. That's fun. Yeah, let's do that. So they unfortunately get two draws since they have Phyrexian Arena here. But I do at least get to take one of them away here. <laughs> you love to see it, chat. For those that weren't paying attention there, what happened was we sacked Fenlurker during their upkeep after they drew with this. And then Nightmare Shepherd brought it back and took the Grey Merchant. Yeah, dress this. Ugh. Be possible to see the team or song deck list. Yeah, you can always see all of the upcoming decks that are going to be playing later today and on all future streams, really, in the deck queue on my website. I'm assuming you're standing because there's no way you can sit with that horseshoe. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. All right. Um. All right, what are we do? What are we doing here? I think it's just Nightmare Shepherd. I mean, I just hope they brick off for a turn. So we have 8, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 15 devotion to black at the moment. We have 11 devotion to black. Would I have killed them last turn? Did I mess up? I think I would have killed them last turn if I'd have drawn instead of playing the Nightmare Shepherd, right? Yeah. yeah I, think, I think I would have killed them. That's fine. We didn't get punished, but it's worth noting here. So this does 26 total, or 28, because this works as well. So we drain them, we could sack it, we drain them again. 
Uh, this is probably a matchup where we just want all of our Heartless Acts. I know cards like Agonizing Remorse feel appealing in matchups like this, but I think you're actually supposed to trim them because deck match games are often going to come down to top deck wars. I think I want a couple of my Karns to generate a little bit of Karn advantage as we go along. Gutter Bones probably doesn't attack in very well against a lot of their threats, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, if I, if I have a card and they don't have a card, we'll have card advantage. Very, very, card advantage is very important to understand with Magic the Gathering. It's fun to, fundamental to doing well. Does your Karn advantage come with corporate backing? Asking the real questions. We did, we did get an instant speed exile Gary from their hand that game, and it was excellent. They have duress in post board against me. Soul Guide Lantern. They were hurt by the Nightmare Shepherd shit. They were hurt by the Nightmare Shepherd. Six of the 32 months, Fred Wick. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Who hurt your opponent? Was their name Nightmare Shepherd? They have a Heartless Act or something here they want to kill this knight with. They're just drawing a card. Deal Arena. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this card's very good with Lurus for sure. I agree that if you have Luris in your 75, this is a best piece. I think this is probably one of the better pieces of Graveyard Hate in this format, even without a Luris consideration. Alright, smack you for four. Counter. I think the best recommendation I heard for the Cycling Flare deck in terms of dexterity is you want to um you want to shuffle all of the cards in your hand that you want to keep over to one side and then you just start from like the left and go over clicking on everything seems like it made a lot of sense to uh to, to do it that way yeah i mean obviously it's like not as good as zero mana draw a card but like two mana draw a card and like the the implications of like being main deckable graveyard hater both very reasonable. Feels like they have a removal spell here. We were getting pauses last time. Yeah, it didn't surprise me. This is definitely a game that's shaping up where we need to be the aggressor. They have the Phyrexian Arena out, so we need to end the game ASAP. As the as the game goes long, they're gonna have more cards than us. Especially with these two for ones on these Fen Lurkers. Is Lantern better than Relic for Modern? I think it depends on your deck. The fact that Relic activates to exile a card every turn is like, not to be understated. Tiamat, Tiamat, whatever it's called. Yep. Yep. Hey, seven you back. Up, 
down. Life's like a jump rope. Do 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 Yes, if we draw if we draw a land we could we could kill our own Gary next turn potentially. Yep. Yep yep yep. Yep yep yep. Get to pump up the jam there. Am, am I dead yet? They're through 23 cards. Do you have a third Grey Merchant in your 23 cards? Alternatively, they could have a Nightmare Shepherd of their own plus a removal spell for their own Grey Merchant. Uh, if we draw a removal spell here for our own Grey Merchant, it's lethal. So if we draw a Murderous Rider or a Heartless Act, we can kill them next turn. Another Grey Merchant, obviously also lethal. Oh, Soul Guide Lantern prevents that from happening though, right? This is a smart play on their part. Well, well played by the opponent here. Oh, feels dead, man. If I attack with these knights, they get to block with Mire Triton. And I can't really afford to swing for the fences, right? Because we could die in the backswing. I guess I guess I'm just attacking for four in the air and like hoping for a live draw next turn while they draw a bunch of cards. This seems loose. So opponent had played this well, but now if this card in my hand is a removal spell, they die because they sacrificed their lantern. So I feel like they had played pretty well up until that point, but sacking their lantern there is definitely a mistake. I'm yeah, supposed to attack with the obliterator and force some blocks. I suppose, I suppose if I attacked with knights and obliterator... I force three blocks. They're dead on board, kinda. The best source of card advantage is killing them with cards to the other hand. Yep, you're not wrong. They're like digging for another gray merchant here. Halfway halfway through their deck and they find a third one. Virulent plague, sure. I mean, I think this attack just happened because they were dead on board to my Nightmare Shepherd next turn regardless. So even though my Grey Merchant dies, I still get a trigger and they die. We 
They should have made them sack first. I ah, ain't that, ain't that mean. Decent, decent historic promos in there. A Dominaria pack for 500 gold. Hit me, dealer. Maybe anything to work towards other mythic wild cards yet. Whoa, it's a rare I didn't have four of. Look at that. Yeah, I don't have, so some of the earlier sets on Arena, we didn't have 4X protection when they were originally put in and I bought a bunch of packs in them. So there's definitely rares that I'm still missing, even though I opened a bunch of packs in them. Four, fourth, fourth copy protection or fifth copy protection didn't exist yet. You really want Obliterator to be good. I would be very surprised if anything like what we're playing made it past like a tier two-ish status. I think, especially as long as Tefri's a card that exists in this format, you're gonna be hard pressed for a card like Obliterator to be too good. At this point, do you have enough rare wild cards to fill out the collection? Yeah, probably, but like, I just craft random things that might be missing as we need them. That's the first match. The second match, we lost to a uh, Jeskai Tempo deck in the first match. When does the season end? The, the seasons in Arena always follow a calendar month. So the end of the end of May is when the season ends. Maybe we'll be Mythic before then. Fun, fun deck would be fun, but Tefri. Yep. Remember when they banned Oko for invalidating creatures, but they didn't ban Tefri for invalidating creatures and instants? Pepperidge. Pepperidge Farmer members. I mean, to be fair to Tefri, good cards basically always stifle out some number of cards that are lower power level, right? That's just like how games like Magic work. However, it would it would be nice if it would be nice if they didn't stifle as many as Tefri. Yeah, Tefri also invalidates a lot of artifacts and enchantments too. Yep, big big agree. Oko. Oko just did artifacts and, and creatures. Tefri does artifacts, enchantments, creatures, and instants. Yeah, he gets rid of some triggered abilities too. What are lands? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Whoa, 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 ho, 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 uh, little Vivian, yeah, yeah, little little Vivian. I I actually think Tefri invalidating little Vivian is one of the most depressing things to come out of War of the Spark because like. Little Vivian is such a sweet design that could have potentially seen a ton of play and then it just never had a chance because her static text just was useless against every static text. There was like a very brief instance at the very start of the format where that card saw play in like a Bant deck, but did not, did not last particularly long. All right, let's drag our curve down here a touch, bring in some more removal. Hey, CK Lau, thanks for the two years. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Sub survey is edging up towards 700 responses. Thanks to, thanks to everyone who's taking the time to fill that out. Both historic and the Hoaglandia opens in general, currently at record highs 
for content people are subbing to support. I think going into... I think going into this survey, my highest was somewhere in the 80 to 85% range. So historic, especially being at 96% sub supporting is, uh, is real high. Playing Arena, I suppose... I started playing Arena after Urquhart was banned. How long did it take for the card to be banned? And how long did it see Standard play before it banned? They didn't ban it to, like, the next set, right? Was... No, Elko was banned before Theros, right? It was a while, though. Their Wizards of the Coast is very slow to make changes. Uh, the sub-survey was emailed out last night. You'll want to make sure your emails were enabled on Twitch. If you don't see an email with the sub-survey, or if you just subbed, pop into the subs Discord server. And the survey is linked in the announcements channel. Granted, you made it easier to vote for more than one thing. No, I have I have both then, yeah? So I, I always I always pull both. So something something that's relevant to know here. Is again, I'm I'm good at I'm reasonably good at designing surveys. I have a check all you sub to support, and then what's your favorite? So this is probably more meaningful. Only 2.5% of survey respondents said standards currently their favorite type of content. So even though 70 said, yeah, I'm subbed because of some standard, like only 2% of people were like, yeah, standard's my favorite. Gazi, thank you for the 17 months. Welcome back. Yeah, that's true as well. Oko, Oko didn't really achieve dominance until they messed up by banning Field of the Dead. Running out of gas here. Watsi is quick to be in players unless you're when when you compare how quickly they banned Austin for not being a snitch with how long it took them to ban other certain unsavory magic players that were left streaming in the community for a long time it's kind of embarrassing Two percent sounds right. They're probably the people that aren't here to support a strike. That's probably an accurate, an accurate reflection, Fox. The survey is in the announcements channel on the Discord server. Need to scroll up a touch. Announcements. There's two. There's two me people. Me tagging people in the surveys right above it. Feels dead, man. Austin never signs in. They didn't ban him for breaking an NDA. They banned him for not assisting in their investigation into someone who did break their NDA. And Wizards of the Coast and the DCI are private organizations that can ban anyone they want for any reason at any point. This isn't, this isn't like some legal issue. This isn't, this isn't something where like there's actual laws that like the government's made. This is a private org that can deny membership for whatever reason they want. And whether or not you think it's right what they did, they can certainly do it. Now that's a different discussion. I'm not even going to get into whether or not it's right or wrong what happened, but can they do it? Yes. Yes. Oh, Bosh, Siren Storm Tamer. Okay, you have my interest. 
Wigan, thanks for the 18 months. I appreciate the year and a half of support. Welcome back. Interesting. It's an aggressive block. Defensive block. Bone Crusher is ready. Yeah, it looks like like blue red wizards or blue red tempo with Obosh. A lot of the cards they want to play, they probably are odd costed anyways. And things like Bone Crusher Giant, and if they're playing like they they could be playing Lookouts Dispersal. They have a lot of like incidental ways to they have a lot of incidental ways to have two mana spells while still playing Obosh. Any of these heavily interactive decks should have reasonable Winota matchups. When we were playing Winota, like, the mono blue matchup was hard. Because, again, decks like Winota are good to have be the good decks in the format, in my opinion. Because they reward people for being interactive. Things that encourage people to be mid-rangey and controlling are good, in my opinion. I sat waiting to connect to my Zoom session in my class for, at 12, and then I remembered it's Memorial Day and I need more coffee. God bless. Yes, drawing, uh, shifting Ceratops is a good card against Mono Blue. In fact, I think Mono Blue should have a splash. Like, you could board in Red Cat Melee in Blue Red or Lava Coil. I think I'm fine with this exchange here with two more Ayara in my hand. Take four here and they draw a card. That's rough. Land's actually an okay draw. Ayara comes in, pokes them. We bring this back. We play it, it pokes them. That's six damage for one mana. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. That's sick. I might owe two tournaments, but at least I'm 16-0 in the months. Thanks for the... Thanks for 16 months, Suna Yummy. I appreciate that. Welcome back for keeping me around. Let's kill Obosh while they're tapped out here. We are taking five in the air, but I get to gain a little bit of life with Ayara. If we're fortunate enough to find another Grey Merchant, we can end the game on the spot. Assuming they don't have a counterspell, they are drawing a couple extra cards here. Okay, and then I get to pick this up and replay it, so I'm not dead to uh, I'm not dead to a single burn spell with their attack in the air. Might might be able to burn them out here with Ayara triggers, even without drawing a, uh, a what's it called? Now, if they have two burn spells, we're gonna die here, like a burn spell and a bounce spell. Okay, yep, Breeze Bar was basically a burn spell. Am I dead yet? Was Ayara lethal? No, Ayara did one extra damage. Yeah, she's she's legendary. Gotta stop. Or Wizard's Lightning? Would not be surprised to eat it here. Yep, close game. 
<laughs> Harsh but fair. Harsh but fair. Still had all D's, Hogland. Listen, they might have they might have a quest to cast their spells, chat. Who, who am I? Who am I to deny them their quest? Okay? Who am who am I to deny them the quest on which they are on? Is it crazy to cut Obliterator here because they're a Brazen Borrower deck? Which if I want to cut one of these four drops, so I'd rather cut Shepherd or Obliterator. That was a genuinely close game. We had them dead on our untap, and they had a burn spell. That's not the definition of a close game for you. I don't know what is. Yeah, Shepard blocks flyers, but like if they don't have Brazen Borrower, Obliterator kills them very quickly. I don't even know that it's fair to say it's hard to resolve a 4-drop. I'd be surprised if my opponent's deck actually has that many counter spells. Like, obviously they had Lookout's Dispersal, but they have a lot of burn in their deck. So this isn't like Mono Blue where they're just like endless counter spells because they're only interaction. They've got a lot of things that in interact with the board. Uh, had we kept that hand, I was going to bottom a Heartless Act. Maybe they had something come up in real life. Maybe they mulliganed or keep clicked keep by mistake. Is Tempest and Historic? Yeah, yeah. All of all of the cards that have been legal on Arena are legal and Historic sans a small ban list. We rolled a critical hit on the mulligan die, something like that. They just rolled the nat one. All right, one Heartless Act, please. One, one Heartless Act, please. This could very easily just win the game here. Mm, that's fair. Yeah, some cards, some cards that were in arena technically, technically aren't in here yet because they got rolled out. Observation. I didn't, I didn't play during the closed beta, so I often forget that Amon Cat was te technically existed on arena. You would have kept the land to cycle later since you have so many lands already. I actually don't have that many lands. And it's actually really important that I'm able to hit five lands consistently. And in fact, if you look at the way I've sequenced my spells and my lands here, I'm using my mana every single turn. And if I had a tapped land, I wouldn't be able to be this resource efficient. So I actually think it's incredibly wrong to keep this a cycle in this instance. I don't think it matters because it looks like we're dead. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and retire this one. I don't I don't think these Grey Merchant Phyrexian Obliterator decks are competitive. Maybe 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 someone else can figure something else. Have to figure something out that I can't, but these mono these mono black decks just don't don't have the tools to keep up with what's what's going on in this format. It's a, it's a really novel card. And again, I actually think Phyrexian Obliterator is a very sweet card to add to the format. Because I think it's a card a lot of people like, and you're gonna. This card is gonna be something that people play, even if it's not very good, because it's just a card they like playing. Same thing with Gray Merchant here, but I think in terms of like trying to sculpt this into into something competitive, it's it's tough, right? Like, and 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 I think if you wanted to get more competitive than what this is, I think my one big takeaway is I would cut these, and I think this just needs to be the entirety. 
the entirety of your top end and like have a lower curve here. But I, I think I think even with a lower curve, this archetype's gonna really struggle to be competitive. I, I don't even think Thought Seize does anything for this deck. I don't I don't think Thought Seize fixes problems that it has with I don't think Thought Seize fixes problems with how this deck just has so many clunky expensive things in it yeah i mean wizards and this is why that's why it's so important for like formats like this to have support rook like wizard of the coast announcing that it's going to be an invitational format means that more things are coming for historic as a whole and it's going to be getting more support overall all right i'm gonna hit a quick ad roll i get things set up and flipped over for the next one and when we get back to to chat we're gonna ball board the party bus here We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.